Okay. So we are coming. Okay, so judge ready, opponents ready. Okay, so my time starts now. We firmly believe that infrastructure can more effectively elevate property because it can provide sustainable health while rather for content. Our framework is whichever thing they can prove they can most uh, more sustainably elevate property should win this debate. What for is government support to satisfy people's basic needs like education and shelter, whereas public infrastructure is basic physical system of nation that can be accessed by everyone publicly, like school and hospital. And condition one, uh, sustainability. Infrastructure is more sustainable than welfare program regarding property elevation. Pro uh, welfare program is merely a temporary shortcut to reduce poverty, whereas infrastructure can provide self-sustaining jobs and transfer local agriculture into more sustainable economy. I live probably more effectively by treating the cause of the problem rather than the symptoms. Um, sub point one, welfare programs are not sustainable. Welfare programs are not sustainable. Welfare programs only temporarily alleviate the poverty while poor people can live a better life for a short time with a limited amount of sudden financial assistance. It is obvious to limit improvements to removing people out of poverty, which is our goal today. Welfare program receivers can easily return to poverty as they are extremely vulnerable when facing difficulties like natural disaster. Henan, Anhui, Shanxi, Heilongjiang provinces alone have added nearly 2 million, million people back into poverty uh, population due to natural disaster in 2010. Sub point two, public infrastructure, provi uh, public infrastructure provides sustainable alternative. In contrast, building more public infrastructure can create sustainable alternative jobs that allows beneficiaries to self-sustain and in independently live above poverty line by eradicating the root of the problem and achieve the permanent uh, poverty elevation. The EU from Nanjing Agricultural University utilizes binary logistic model analysis to uh, analyze the poverty reduction effect on infrastructure investment on poor households, especially for DBAR recipients. The article particularly mentioned the significant effect of industry investment on, on poverty elevation of DBAR recipients. And of course, this indicates that the DBAR house has given priority to the employment opportunities created during the construction of rural infrastructure. Infrastructure due to the limited assistance welfare program has provided. The long-term effect of infrastructure investment not only significantly promotes the poverty alleviation of DBAR household, it also has a stronger poverty reduction effect in the short term. Further comparisons uh, shows that the poverty reduction effect of infrastructure investment is better than that of ordinary poor household, and the significance is stronger. Therefore, the government should continue to increase investment, investment in infrastructure in poor areas. And sub point three, Department of Financial Statistics in Beijing Normal University, um, they use the um, empirical results shows that rural infrastructure such as landline, telephone, and tap water is generally conducive into improving the income level of rural, rural residents, thus helping to narrow the income gap between urban and rural areas in China. More importantly, lower the income groups benefit more from rural infrastructure, which means that the rural uh, infrastructure can also improve income inequality within areas. Increased spending in public infrastructure and construction can bring long term stable property reduction, eliminate property and return costs by backward uh, undeveloped infrastructure improvement, and lack of a stable income source and truly affects the reality of your poverty. Condition two, infrastructure can er eradicate the problem of poverty. Infrastructure can alleviate poverty by protecting people from natural disasters and increase overall income. Economy. According to analysis of the cost and counter measures of returning to poverty in poor areas by Deng Dazong in recent decades, the ecological environment in Western, uh, in Western China has been suffering from serious damage. Soil degradation, severe e soil evo uh, erosion, justification, and unbearable ecological carrying capacity. The ability of the eco uh, ecological system to res resist external re uh, natural disaster is greatly reduced, and the natural disasters occur frequently. We ask the local agriculture production has a strong dependence on the uh, natural environment since it, it is the only income source of poor, poor people in rural areas. Deputy Director of China Public Relief Office. Wang Guoliang uh, said that the direct uh, economic losses caused by natural disaster exceed 100 billion yuan every year, and more than 10 million people in rural areas return to poverty every year due to natural disaster. Um, so, in the, in the natural development, uh, also, in such a situation, welfare programs are limited and useless to the victims. Therefore, the importance of public infrastructure, which could prevent natural disaster, can be shown. Increased financial investment in public infrastructure better prevent hundreds of millions of people going back to poverty, so as to achieve the goal of alleviating poverty more effectively today. Okay, yeah, that's my speech. Oh, wait, just let me turn off my mic. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, here it is. Oh, I can stop. Okay. Uh, it's ready. It's ready. My stop. Oh. Oh. My time starts. Now, we are firm in China. Increased spending on welfare program is more effective at alleviating poverty than increased spending on public infrastructure. Because the poor need to constantly use their limited self-control and decision-making abilities, they constantly have to face the abilities of mistakes. These mistakes largely come from aspects of food, health, education, and facility. Contention one: Better health, uh, better education leads to better decision-making. Gaps between urban and rural children start in primary school. This is worrisome, as rural children make up around 70% of China's school age population. At least one quarter of the variation in student test scores was due to the quality of the teacher quality. One study in the United States estimated that higher student grades increased three times 
more when taught by a high quality teacher versus a low quality teacher. However, high quality teachers are not willing to go to rural schools because of low income, low quality students, less comfortable facilities. With the increased spending on welfare programs, we can encourage teachers to go to rural areas. And uh, published in Science, a new study with a sample size of 3,000 at that camp found that education can be leveraged to help enhance an individual's economic decision making quality and economic rationality. Therefore, if teacher quality increases, students' performance will increase. The ability of decision-making increases, which eventually helps the poor break the cycle of poverty. Contention to better health care breaks the cycle of poverty. The cost for treatment uh, for major infectious diseases incur a financial shortfall for affected individuals and households. Poor people don't have insurance because either they do not have jobs or their workplace do not cover insurance. In addition, they tend to have dangerous working conditions, which means they have higher risks of getting sick. Therefore, out-of-pocket payments trap for and year for households in a vicious cycle due to a large personal expense, leading to impoverishment and worse health. Every year, a reportedly 100 million people globally are pushed into poverty often due to illness and pre-existing sickness aggravated by lack of essential health services. Their illness will likely uh, decrease their income, which makes them less likely to uh, treat their diseases this from the cycle of poverty, which they can never jump out of. However, better health provides support through a program can break the cycle of poverty, which effectively alleviates poverty and can break. Housing impacts school, work, and the ability to reform. State uh, Great Corporation of China confirmed the number of empty apartments are as many as 46.8 million, not having the use of electricity for six consecutive months in 2010, which is more than 20% of all residency in Chinese cities. Urban house prices are seven times higher than the annual income of low-income households, even after obtaining a bank loan covering 20% of down payment. A Fudan University professor uh, Chen, who participated in the government discussion concerning Shanghai's guaranteed housing policy, said the burden is simply unbearable for these families. For people who live far away from their workplace and schools because they cannot afford good housing and they will be likely to arrive late, likely to lose their job, and that providing at for the poor have access to better housing, they can perform better in work with less risk of being acquired. Therefore, it breaks the cycle of property. Conclusion. With increased spending on welfare programs, we can effectively alleviate poverty by providing better education, better health, and better housing. Narrowing the gap between wealthy and the poor, make the society more stable, and there'll be less conflict between classes. Thank you. Speaker Crossfire, are you ready for that? As many times, okay, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so um, there is an echo going, so wait. Okay, so the time will start when I ask my first question. Um, okay. So time starts now. Okay, so you mentioned that in your condition three that if um welfare from welfare program can allow uh, recipients to have better housing. I don't get the point since infrastructure can just simply provide them with better house. Like I don't get how is that unique and like support your contention. I'm sorry, because uh, I'm using myself. Can we start like that? Okay, so in your contention three, you mentioned that uh, welfare programs allow recipients to have a better housing. I don't really, like, I didn't get the full parts, but basically it's like this kind of like a concept. How does this, how is this unique since we can just use infrastructure and provide them with better house? Because the housing already exists. It, it doesn't mean that oh, we have to build more house like uh, uh, to provide for the poor, but actually to a better like, uh, live living uh, living conditions for them. So it's actually yeah, living condition. That's why we need infrastructure. Welfare program can provide a better living condition, like environment, right? They don't have the money to go to, to rent the house or pay the house. Internet spot. Okay. Okay, uh, sure. Yeah. I have my questions now. So you're uh in your like uh contention, both in your contention one some point A and your contention you mentioned about like the uh, natural disasters about. 
if you're gonna like after the disaster, it's not well for more effective because if it uh instantly just get them uh, uh offer them better living place to live for a permanent time. Uh, like oh. it would, for infrastructure, it takes a long time to like rebuild all the roads and house. So what is the question like? Like all the so what is the question? I, I think that it's like not effective because. It's, Why? Um, because there's a lot of people that's being affected by a uh, natural disaster. That's why we need infrastructure to prevent the disease. You can't use welfare program to prevent the disease. Instead of um, letting those people being harmed by natural disaster, you could just use infrastructure and prevent the disease so we can save those money. Natural disasters doesn't really make sense. Okay, sure. So you know, I can, I can, I will simply just provide you with an example, uh, with a was the evidence that you say so it is not uh, effective? So National Bureau of Statistics show that in Wenchuan earthquake mm -hmm. loss to private and urban housing account for twenty seven percent of total uh, natural house loss of private and urban housing account for twenty seven point four percent of the total losses. Well, and hospital and other school and non residential building account for twenty point five percent of the total loss. Right. So right. even right. after right. natural disaster, like infrastructure doesn't help, uh, like instantly help people just to. Yeah, like uh, oh, so, travel of natural disasters. I'm not talking no, about so, so okay, so you're saying that after the after the natural disaster, it can help, right? So I'm providing with I'm providing with example that after natural disaster, most of the uh, most losses about after infrastructure. Disaster. So we need to build more infrastructure to cover the losses. Let's meet there. I think we're done. I don't know. Her rebuttal speech, you didn't prep time. Um, no, I'm good. Um, um, um. Sorry about that. Uh, let me, let me just get my mic and voice. Um, okay, so I will start my speech in uh, three, two, one. Okay, so um, I believe that uh. Uh, the first side uh, talked about how um, uh, the welfare program is effective and um, it can alleviate property. Uh, I mean, poverty. However, I believe that um, it is ineffective with the st statistics shown in the research. In 2016, DBA only reduced poverty by 6.5%, and certainly not worth the money or increased spending. And um, also, uh, the, uh, the the welfare program contains some inequality, which um, is very uh, in effect, or uh, is it's really affecting the uh, ability to the, the ability welfare program can give uh, to alleviate a poor population because it's uh, in uh, it's not distributing the uh, uh, um, um, welfare program's money to um, the pe people who need. So uh, Wang Zhengwen from uh, Nanjing University of Finance Economy said that there are huge differences in their uh, effect of financial assistance for rural citizens among uh, provinces and cities. And the system for rural poverty largely depends on the financial payment capacity of a local gov government, which is affected by many factors like corruption. So how can you ensure a welfare program can alleviate, uh, equally av alleviate poverty all across the country? Um, and also another uh, point is that it might mistarget people. Um, from the ev evidence of a study that in in inaccurate targeting and corruption produce fatal flaws in DBAO system. Many people who don't get it aren't really poor, and many poor who actually need it don't get it. Overall, uh, multiple studies prove it's completely ineffective at reducing par poverty. According to the China's Health Retirement Longitudinal uh, longitudinal uh, study, the anti-poverty effect of DBAO in rural areas is limited. The reduction of poverty is only about 1%. This means that um, not only not only that uh, the welfare program is ineffective, it is also giving uh, those people, uh, those bad guys, I would say, because they're corrupt, it's corruption, uh, more money to, um, uh, more inequality among people's um, wealth. And moving on to my second point, um, um, the medical ins uh, the medical insurance thing. It is not sustainable, and increasing spending won't solve the problem. As the government has, uh, the government already has um, uh, spent too much mo money on it. Uh, so, uh, Tsinghua University Medical Service Management Research Center latest research indicates that beginning from 2024, Chinese medical treatment health total costs will grow by percent. 
3 trillion to 272 trillion in 2040. This will bring unbearable burden to finance, medical treatment, and insurance fund and individual. Um, now, this really indicates that even if you even if you try to solve the problem of uh, uh, putting fund into medical uh, insurance or uh, welfare, it is going to collapse and it's going to be unbearable for the Chinese government because it's just too much. Uh, moving on to my next point, which is uh, explaining the reason why it's too much, it's going to grow. It's because that uh, people are going to age and uh, aging uh, is a really big problem in China because um, we're moving through a, towards a uh, aging age. So in uh, June 2020, uh, yeah, uh, Tao Yang from National School of Development at Peking University pointed out that the wages of retirement people have rise uh, relatively too quickly. Very soon the income will not cover expenses. And that means that um, uh, the, the retired aged people's wages will uh, um, increase. And as the aging people increase, the amount of aging people increase, and as the wages of retired aging people uh, increase, uh, it is going to be unbearable, which uh, relates to the last one, um, the last uh, evidence I provided. Now uh, to the educational one, I believe that um, edu the point why um, uh, education is has no quality is because of uh, there aren't good quality infrastructure, not because there's not enough funding. Uh, China education poverty alleviation okay, report. In yes. Oh shoot. I'm, I'm going to use a minute. Thank you. Um, I'm ready. So my time starts now. Our framework today is that the team that helped the poor break out of the cycle of party wins the debate. Um, on their side, uh, they keep uh, 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 their second contention is that uh, there's all these natural disasters. Uh, uh, land erosion, things like that, but uh, they're just listing all the all the things that um bad happening in the environment. However, they're not providing an actual plan of how to um protect the environment, uh, uh improve the land quality, things like that. And also, um, sorry, I'm, I'm uh, there... asking a question. Is this crossfire? Still speech. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Sure. Okay, rebuttal. So, I'm so sorry, sorry, please. Um, and um, also, they keep uh, saying about Jiba, which uh, we never said that in our constructive, which is really strange. So um, all of this and uh, the evidence provided for, uh, which only implies Jiba, uh, I think it doesn't imply in uh, other places. Uh, so we'll just leave that. And also they talk about aging population and the wage of them. Um, are increasing, uh, which is a huge burden. However, um, um, uh, uh, so um, well, with welfare, we can uh, help them, but however, with their infrastructure, they're just going to leave them, not helping them. That's, that's very inhumane. And um, also, uh, they never tax us on our uh, education argument, um, um, uh, which is that uh, because 
uh, in rural areas, so there are already a lot of schools. However, uh, there are no no uh, good teachers there. Um, um, so if we encourage teachers to go there, uh, they can teach uh, the students there to have uh, better ability of decision making um, and can help them have better performance, which um, uh, help them break the cycle of poverty. And um, also, they said that our second contention about uh, bad health care is not sustainable, um, um, but that's actually not true because um, uh, a lot of people, they uh, are poor and poor because the huge expenses of uh, uh, health care of these uh, diseases uh, is very expensive and uh, medical insurance, they don't cover these diseases because uh, they need to um, have benefits. So, so they do not uh, cover these like, expenses uh, and a lot of People who are not poor are pushing to party by this, but um, by providing uh, welfare programs, we can help them break the cycle of poverty. Um, and also, uh, they attack us on our third contention about housing. There are already a lot of houses, good houses there, but uh, we've said that there are 600, uh, six, 64.5 million empty apartments there, which is more than 20% of the residences. That's a very huge number. And these are just empty. They're just there. And uh, the poor, they can't afford them. And uh, they live very far from their workplaces. Um, and they arrive late at their workplaces. And they're very likely to get fired. So uh, this uh, will make them poor and poor. So just, just uh, building houses doesn't solve the problem. However, by providing um, uh, but by providing welfare, we can uh, help them break the cycle of poverty, which um, effectively alleviates poverty. Thank you. Okay, so it's crossfire, and I don't need any preparation. Me neither. We can just start. Okay, so I'm going to start asking the first question. Um, so you talked about how a uh, welfare program is going to break the um, um, poverty cycle, I believe. Um, can you please uh, extend a little bit more about how um, this will happen? Uh, well, our whole case is by, based on how to break the poverty cycle. Uh, the cycle of party. Uh, so you want me to explain the constructive or yeah. uh, can you please explain more detailed how it's going to actually work uh, by breaking the cycle? Okay, so our first contention is about education because there are a lot of students in rural areas. Um, um, uh, they make 70% of China's school age population and a lot of schools are just there, but because the teacher quality there isn't Sorry, good enough. Do you have enough. evidence for that? There are a lot of schools that are just there. Uh, um, uh, I, I'll have to find it that, uh, like, it's not on my hand. I have it in the, uh, um, in my cards. Oh, uh, okay. And, um, and do you also that. notice that there, there's a reliance problem um, occurring in uh, the welfare program? Are you also aware of that? Um, there's a reliance problem. So like you give money and they rely on that money and won't break the cycle. Um, which is well, through our whole case, we never said we're going to give them money. The first is going to give them better education. And the second is about covering their, uh, 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 covering their, uh, like covering the expenses of diseases. Only if they get sick and uh, we will cover the expenses. We're not giving them money. And well, also can you about please housing. define a little bit about what your welfare program is? The first is to encourage good quality teachers to go, go to rural areas. The second is covering the huge expenses of health care, which uh, a lot of poor people and who um, are likely to be pushed over the party line uh, for these people. Okay, so they, they, they don't get poor and poor. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I think it's my turn. Uh, so can you um, can you answer me your actual plan of building infrastructure which alleviates poverty? Uh, you mean like uh, on which side, the natural disaster side, the education side? Um, what are you talking about? Uh, because I think uh, you just. Sure, I'm, I'm asking like you which side are you talking about? Because there's a lot of way that infrastructure can help people. Um. Uh, did you list any in your case? Because I yes, didn't hear yes. any. Yes. Okay. Um. So uh, uh can you start from the yes. natural. Um. Disaster? So uh, from natural disaster side, uh, uh, we talked about how it can prevent. I did not say, or actually. Prevent and um, help the victims after. Yes. Oh, sorry. Time. Sorry. Oh uh, wait. Um, I want to use like what? Just think about two minutes for prayer time. <laughs> Um, okay, it's fine. Mm, let me see, just let me give her a speech. Okay, so judge and judges ready? Opponents ready? My time starts. Yeah. So in summary, infrastructure sustainably alleviates poverty by creating more jobs opportunities for the workers. It has a, uh, especially a significant uh, effects on deep recipients who live in extreme poverty. And authorities' research also showed that welfare program recipients has given priority a priority to the employment opportunities created during infrastructure con uh, construction, which means under in comparison, the poverty alleviation effect of infrastructure on poor peoples is more effective than welfare program. And uh, in contrast, uh, in contrast, welfare program can effectively and sustainably alleviate poverty because welfare program recipients are extremely vulnerable to difficulties. After spending consider uh, considerable Amount of money to let people out of poverty, people just return to poverty as they are extremely vulnerable, which means that welfare, welfare program basically has no significant effects on poverty elevation. In sub point three, our evidence also indicates that infrastructure improves income inequality. And two, infrastructure can prevent natural disaster, which is driving more than 10 million people back into poverty every year and costing more than 100 billion yuan per year, which means, uh, which means by building more infrastructure, all of these losses can be greatly reduced, which was a huge exclusive impact on poverty elevation, whereas opposition has no solution to it. And, um, and in contrary, opposition didn't have, uh, didn't have any alternative solution to our natural disaster contention, since we have proved that infrastructure, can't both, uh, uh, infrastructure can both prevent natural disaster and help those poor people after natural disaster, thus this exclusive impacts of infrastructure on that probably uh, effective public elevation means that we win this contention. And secondly, opposition talk about severe condition education and drive a good teacher away, which leads to a low quality education. But surprisingly, uh, opposition basically agreeing with our point. First of all, severe condition can only be solved by infrastructure construction, by building more, uh, more better, uh, like more and better school. And secondly, quality teacher is irrelevant to both infrastructure and welfare program. And therefore, the points didn't stand at all. And they, they also didn't talk about why we should increase money on welfare program. Um, especially educational welfare, is therefore we win at this contention. Third, opposition also talk about education leads to better decision making, yet this is only a concept uh, proposed by opposition since they didn't provide any evidence or impacts to support the points. And again, why we should increase spending on infrastructure if it is really effective, as the opposition has been mentioned throughout the debate. Therefore, this, con uh, this connection is insignific insignificant. And fourth, uh, opposition talk about, how, about health insurance, yet they are, they are uh, neglecting the root of the problem. It is, a bad, um, it is a bad condition that makes poor people get sick, and which means the catastrophic health manager for a medical treatment is too high, which drives them to poverty. Therefore, increased spending on medical insurance won't solve the problem. Only using infrastructure like relocation, 
to improve the environment of poor people, of which poor people's living can truly effectively unsolve the problem. Therefore, we win at this condition too. Basically, since opposition didn't provide any significant impacts and strong evidence to, to prove the and prove and, do, and supports the contention, and no explanation on why we should increase money on welfare program, which is our motion today, our impacts clearly outweighs there, and we win a natural disaster, education, employment contention. Therefore, we should win this debate. Thanks, and that's my speech. A minute has I think I can start now. My time is start now. So throughout the whole today, uh, on our pro side, uh, our framework today is about we we have look for people bring the cycle of poverty. So uh, the first comparison is about like natural uh, disasters and the environment. Now we think that uh, first of all that infrastructure cannot prevent natural disaster because it's called, called natural disasters and you cannot do anything actually to prevent it from happening. Then a quick and, and uh, effective way to recover from natural disasters is actually using welfare because you can see that you have people donate money to help the people uh, to get, in, get into a better housing, get into moving to other places, which the, uh, immediately bring them out of the kind of like the poverty state. And, uh, and the sec second uh, point I want to talk about is the, is the access for education and for health care. Uh, we already said that in our constructive speech that there are already schools and there are already hospitals uh, there. It doesn't mean that the poor, they have the ability or they have the access to go to the uh, school to re receive a better education. Like we provide a uh, better uh, education, uh, teaching quality to these group of people. We help them break the cycle of poverty. We, uh, so first of all, uh, it's like if you're raised in a poor family, you have uh, like uh, limited resources to receive education or like health. And then uh, if you don't uh, have that access, you might like get sick or just kind of keep trapping down and you have the next generation, which is like pretty bad. And uh, uh, and also uh, for their, uh, they have actually no solution because they're all talking about like low income, the gaps, uh, which they're not using infrastructure to solve the problem. But however, while well, first specifically gave that group of people just the, uh, um, the money to support them, help them to get out of the trap, and then they can have a, a in the future they can have a lot of more sustainable, uh, maybe working uh, future for them. And uh, also, uh, I think our opponent didn't um, really understand our contention on like uh, housing because we already talked about the access. We're talking about access of uh, to the uh, health uh, 
healthcare, education, and housing. Because the infrastructure is already there. We don't need to increase spending on there. Uh, we have like limited space and limited land. We don't need to do all of these. We have just to use it wisely to uh, access it. So it doesn't mean that uh, we have to like build more infrastructure, spend more money on infrastructure. It's just a waste of money and time. So I think that uh, uh, our side, we have uh, provide access to specific like education and health which is more effective and amazing and um, I know you're in prep time to opposition in prep time um, I don't need any prep time sorry I don't need any prep time okay. we, we... So we don't need part time. Okay, so the time is now. I want to ask my first question. Okay, okay so in your summary, you mentioned that you think that natural disaster can, uh, infrastructure cannot prevent natural disaster. Well, can you, do you have any evidence to prove that? You can't just say you think. So we're saying that because you are not providing actual plans to. No, you're um, saying you're, no, you're. You're proposing a contention that infrastructure cannot solve, uh, cannot prevent natural disaster, which is pro proposed by us. Do you have any evidence to support your contention? structure is like you're probably going to say like uh because after the like the severe natural disaster a quick way and an effective way to recover sorry i'm asking for uh, evidence like a valid evidence to support that to support your contention we i don't want like reasoning i want evidence you just only about mentioned the natural disaster like from like when Chinese or whatever like earthquake like this and there's no actual solution to actually help the people to like to we are like, um, yeah. I think you may understand our points when I talk about one trend region, we are talking about how many infrastructure are being uh, are cut, like 50% of the losses is infrastructure. So you're saying that uh, so we are talking one trend region is about our connection about one trend region is about after one trend region, half of the losses is about infrastructure. So that's why we need more money to be uh, to rebuild those infrastructure, not welfare mm -hmm. program. And is a uh, natural disaster is going to happen every day in every places. Of course not, but every time it brings a lot of great losses. I provide you with evidence yeah, every year 10 million people are being affected. 10 million like, people. It takes a lot of time actually to build those infrastructure. It's not really effective. But well, how long? Okay, sure. You say you say you say take a lot of time, but how long? You can't just say take a lot of time. Like we can we can say infra welfare provider is not effective because it takes a lot of time too. But how long? You have to provide evidence. Um, and what's your evidence? So you are not provide like you're not no, providing it. You're control. saying that infrastructure construction is too long. You are you it is your burden to provide evidence, not ours. Okay. So I guess you can ask your question anyway. Okay, so um what's your actual plan to uh decline the income graph? So again, just my opponent, uh, my, my teammates has mentioned what kind of plans. There are too many about like creating jobs, like, like building more that create jobs that brings job opportunities, create more school that like provides facilities for people to to uh, to be educated. Yeah, There's too many ways. We don't have that access to school. Yeah, which and the jobs, the jobs. All right, and so what is the jobs? What is the question <laughs> about school? Like I don't get the point. When we're talking to like more general context, like you don't like. So like but you're providing jobs and. Yes, that's our mm, contention. We are infrastructure provide jobs. How can you be um? Time is up. Time of second you need prep time one. Yes, I need. I I'll use all of the prep time. So you you mentioned that.
Con. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, my focus will start right now. Okay, so firstly, they did not provide data about how a welfare program is going to be effective. They only talked about, oh, well, welfare program is gonna break the cycle. I don't see any links. They did not provide any links, any solid data to prove that if they do that, then this yeah, will happen. Therefore, their argument about that is valid. Um, also, all of their rebuttals have, uh, all of their rebuttals are assumptions. They think that we cannot pre uh, prevent natural disasters. They think that uh, welfare, our uh, infrastructure cannot help people after uh, a natural disaster has happened. They think that um, welfare, our uh, infrastructure uh, takes a lot of time to build our infrastructure. And all of their um, rebuttals are assumptions, therefore it's also invalid. And um, uh, about their framework, I believe their framework is to break the uh, poverty cycle. However, I do not see anything as specific examples that how in our uh, welfare program is going to help um, the uh, poverty, par uh, uh, people in poverty. They have no evidence to show how, uh, in how it decreases the poverty population, the poor population, and only assumptions which they formed in their mind to assume that, oh, this is going to work. Therefore, I believe uh, they are rejecting their, uh, they have not answered their uh, framework. And we have provided a uh, more significant impact, for example, 10 million people, uh, which my partner had already uh, 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 argued and um, confirmed, and how that uh, infrastructure is going to help a natural dis uh, help prevent natural disaster per uh, and uh, help people who's after, after the effect of natural disaster to and help them. So therefore, our impacts uh, are valid and are greater and outweigh their impact, which they don't have any. And I believe that is the case. Um, I'm going to use all person. Thank you. I'm ready. Yeah. So my time starts now. In our, uh, in our uh, opponents' uh, speeches, they never uh, have an actual plan of how they're going to live in poverty, but uh, just saying that these are bad, these are bad. And even if they have a plan for the poor, uh, they have a plan. How can they ensure that these are for the poor? They're saying uh, they're going to provide jobs because they build infrastructure. So that's actually really um, irrelevant. And also, uh, uh, the cycle of poverty is very difficult to break. If children are born into poor family, they're more likely to get sick and less likely to get an education. And as adults, they will find it difficult to get a good job. So they will be poor like their parents. Uh, therefore, uh, poverty usually persists from one generation to another. However, without welfare programs, we can help them break the cycle of poverty. So uh, first first of all, better education, uh, better teacher quality will help their performance to increase and their ability of decision making to increase. Uh, and um, about healthcare, uh, they, can't, they, don't, they can't afford the huge expenses of these uh, healthcare, um, and with welfare, we can uh, help them have uh, uh, have these healthcare, which uh, help them break the cycle of poverty, and also um, about housing, which uh, already there, but we help them to have access to them. So.
Um, so please, the judges, can you all go to the minigram and vote so that I can see the result? We already had the results. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here shows a five two zero decision for the con team. So congratulations to the con team for entering the next round. Um. Uh. I think our judges will have some brief feedback for the first team. Oh wait, just sorry, judge, but what is the result? I I I think I have some internet problem. Um. It's oh. a five zero decision. The yeah, so means Kong wins this round and all of the judges will for concert. I will just start with my oral feedback because I only have 10% of my laptop. So basically, uh, for me, this is a pretty <laughs> pretty clear debate for me to judge. And I think both sides have some points more in the future because of this is only novice diffusions. But like anyway, congratulations to both teams for entering the finals. It is a really hard to get for you guys to compete in such a tournament. And I can see that both guys did a really great job in the whole part. So basically, there are three main reasons for me to vote for Kansai. So first of all, Pro failed to give me any impact weighing through the whole debate round. And they do not use any clear evidences to give the judge their overall impact always. And Kong rebut all of the arguments brought up by Pro Zai, and they successfully defined their own cases to win. But Pro did not actually engage with Kansai cases for most of the time. And um, Pro also needs to prepare like more solid questions against the opposing team instead of asking a lot of invalid questions in cross session. Kind of like when you're asking for like, does your, does your contention make sense? Or asking questions like, uh, how do you actually solve this question is kind of invalid in public forum debate. But this is still not the region finals, so good luck to both teams for future debate rounds. And I will give some individual feedback. So for first speaker process. So first of all, learn to interrupt your opponents in first speaker cross -word. So for most of the time, if you can see that Kansai first speaker almost dominate the whole cross pair session. I mean, although they, uh, the speaker who speaks most will not always win the debate, but if, if that means that she, he almost speaks for the whole three minutes means that you guys do not actually have some talk in it. And also, uh, second of all, you need to give solid responses by providing clear evidences to the cross questions. And also, summary speech is not about like double emphasizing how your size own contentions makes sense. So weigh the whole impact to buy judges' votes and gives a clear clashing point to this debate like what engagements that you get both sides have and why in each question point that you win because we need evidences or we need logic or we need impact. And for second speaker, so if you only claim that we have a card about it for most of the cross session, like will not count as a solid response for me to me because of like you need to pull out the exact evidences to support that like what card that you have and read a lot or like consign to check evidence to show that actually that we have evidence and statistics to support. And also second of all, use evidence to support our claims in rebuttal speech. Do not use a lot of personal logics and reasonings. Like I when I heard your rebuttal speech, so most of the speech was supported, most of the part was supported by personal logics. And also for Kansai first speaker and second speaker. So although both of you win this round, but you guys actually have a lot of improvement to make in the future. So first of all, I like how you construct your whole cases because of the constructed speech is clear and arguments are structured in a logical way. 
But also, summer speech is not only about another rebuttal speech after a four minutes rebuttal speech. So organizing the question points in this part, like in which question point that you guys win, or in which contention that your opponents actually drop this. But I did not hear the things like that. You just do another rebuttal speech to the cases or to their another to to their other part of speeches. And also, I like your uh, first speaker crossbar performance because it is fairly good and you are able to give quantifiable impacts towards process questions. And for second speaker, so I think you could structure your rebuttal speech in a clear way. Like the former would be like in process contention one, there are two or three responses from my side. So kind of make your rebuttal speech more organized. So for me, this is a pretty, like pretty clear debate for me. And although another time, congratulations to Kongside for being the champion of this round. And also congratulations to both team for entering the finals. Yeah, good luck. So uh, I guess I will continue with the comment. Sorry, I didn't realize the final round. So congratulations to the Kong, you're the champion of this round tournament. Um, first, I will start with the pro debaters. Um, you guys did well on uh, arguing that the better education will contribute to better decision making and that thus the economic growth. And you did well on answering them in a crossfire that well, what we, we, we mean by welfare is not solely giving money to, to people, but covering their basic spending on medical treatment and primary schooling. One point your opponents made to challenge you is that they think people will rely on the financial aid that the government gave. You should definitely come up with some response to this. Like, for example, the DBAO is actually less than the minimum payment of any kind of job. So there is incentive and intention for people to get employed in order to get more pay. So you should definitely come up with some responses like this to attack your challenge. And um, as for the content, um, you did well on mentioning that the welfare is a kind of short term effect. A large percent of people will return to poverty after years, which doesn't indeed uh, alleviate poverty. You did well on giving me evidence and explain to me that the current welfare system is lank in accuracy of targeting. That the people who are getting money right now are not those people who are actually in need. And I like your point on the influence of the infrastructure on rebuilding after nature disasters. Uh, this is actually the first time in this tournament that I heard this contention, which is good. Uh, one thing I heard you say that is um, your opponents' points are based on their assumption. They they assume their nature disaster cannot be prevented, but it is true that nature disaster cannot be prevented because they are nature. So one thing you can argue for this is what we can do is use infrastructure and the spending in, in infrastructure to make up to it. This is what you should argue for if there is further resolution like this. So. That's it. Okay. Um, to add to what the other judges have said, I think that um, the pro team, you've all done a long efforts, please, uh, being novice and coming to this round final finals. I think you've, you've really done well. But then uh, the first speaker for pro, I think you should try to. Uh, learn how to ask questions, relevant questions during the crossfire. And then this is a, a, a public forum debate and we deal with evidence. And so if you make a claim, always make sure that you support your claims with um, substantial evidence. And then for the con team, uh, your second speaker during your rebuttal, I think you spent too much time rebutting just one point. This made very little time available for the other points. That was why at a point, I think the pro team said you did not rebut their education point, but you had spent a lot of time rebutting the other points. So try to apportion your time properly so that you can tackle all the points they make equally so you don't spend too much time on one particular point. And uh, for both teams, your constructive speeches, I expected to... Um, uh, have a lot of quantified you mentioned but then I expected having um, judge other other um, uh, debaters yeah I expected that you should include a lot of quantified impact your impacts were okay but we want the quanti like uh, the percentages you should mention the numbers when you do that it increases your chances of winning so try to um, 
include that in your subsequent debates. Um, you know, you've all done well and congratulations to you. Thank you. Okay, um, other judges have basically covered everything, so I'm gonna make this real quick. Um, congratulations uh, to the con side, and we're gonna start from some individual feedback. So pro side, first of all, your condition one, better education leads to better decision making. I feel like the whole logical structure is like, again, based on assumptions at the concept has said, because there's, again, no quantifiable impact. And moving on, I feel like your rebuttal speech needs signposting so that you could have, like, a more clear structure and also more evidence is needed. Again, avoid uh, using terms like I think because it makes your argument personal, not empirical, which is not advantageous for your team. Move on to the con side. Uh, there's just two minor points. The first one is, like, when you're mentioning welfare, mistargeting, corruption in your um, rebuttal speech, I feel like you need more authoritative sources instead of just saying according to one study, blah, blah. So that could add up to, um, that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, and also when you say like DBA only re reduces 60% of um, poverty in rural areas, this evidence could only be used as your size evidence when you um, explicitly compare this number with the reduction rate reduced by infrastructure with the same amount of money. So just make sure that impair comparison is very important um, in using in um, employing this as your size evidence. And uh, for me, there's like basically three uh, voting points. The first one, natural disaster. Second one, employment and education. And the third one is housing. I think pro... Um, con side one well, uh the the natural disaster and, and employment cards uh because you prove like how infrastructure help poor people and like um jobs created by infrastructure could actually go to poor people um and pro sites education card doesn't really make that much of a sense but when it terms to when it comes to the housing point, I feel like pro side really won this point because Kong like really never directly answers like the question of how infrastructure system actually grant poor people's access to the things that they build. So this is just one thing that you guys should keep in mind with. But overall I think it's a really good great debate. Thank you.